Hello everyone, this is Sujata from Informatica. In this video, we will be learning about what is Spark History Server and how to keep it always up and running. The agenda for my presentation, introduction to Spark History Server, benefits of Spark History Server, steps to keep it always running, steps required from Informatica side, common issues and solution. What is Spark History Server? When we start a Spark application, the Spark context launches a web UI and that can be accessed only when the application is running. There are uh, plenty of useful information that we can get from this UI, like the list of scheduler, stages and tasks, the information on RDD, the memory and the size taken by them, the environment uh, details like the class path for the driver and executor, the Spark runtime properties, information on running executors. So um, as uh, just now I mentioned, uh, the Spark UI will only be accessible when the Spark application is running. And it goes off when the Spark uh, application finishes. But what if a user wants to go back to that page, uh, review the settings uh, taken up by the Spark job, uh, get more details on uh, the executors that were uh, running for uh, the Spark job that will not be available. That is when the Spark History Server uh, becomes important. With Spark History Server, we will be having those information always available even after the job has finished. So uh, this is just a uh, service that will be uh, running on one of the data node. So here are the list of uh, benefits of the Spark History Server. By looking at the environment tab of a particular job in the Spark History Server UI, we can find out which jars were loaded for the job and in which order it was loaded. If there are any conflicting jars, we can find them out. We have information on the executors, like how many executors were created, how much time each of the executor took to complete. This information is very useful if a user wants to make some changes with respect to for improving uh, the performance or if a user wants to know why the job was performing slow. Uh, then with respect to logs, uh, we can easily fetch individual executor logs from the Spark UI, uh, history server UI. Otherwise, we would have to get the complete application log using the yarn command or we would have to go to the HDFS location to get each of the executor log. So uh, fetching from the Spark uh, history server UI becomes very easy. That was all about what is Spark history server and its benefits. Now let's come to uh, the steps to enable the Spark history server. So uh, it, with respect to Informatica, it is very important to have the Spark history server being started using the same version of Spark which Informatica uses. So if there is a mismatch in the Spark version which Informatica uses and which the Spark history server was started with, uh, we'll be having problems in viewing the details that we just talked about. Like we'll not be able to uh, get the details on the job like the executors and the statistics. Those will not be uh, displayed on the Spark History Server web page. So uh, let me, I have taken, uh, for this demo, I have taken Informatica 10.2.1 as an example. So Informatica 10.2.1 uses Spark 2.1. So for that, uh, for that reason, I have, I would need to download uh, the Spark source code for Spark uh, uh, 2.1. So I have done this on one of the data node. Uh, after this, I have copy. I would need to copy the site XMLs from my cluster to uh, the conf folder present in my Spark uh, root directory. Uh, once this is done, uh, I would need to configure the log directory uh, where I would need where I have to write the Spark event logs. So. This has to be done using the property Spark History FS log directory. So uh, the value for this will be a location from the HDFS where I will be writing the Spark event logs. Uh, uh, event logs. This is nothing but the application logs. As in the screenshot we see here, I have couple of application logs uh, stored at this directory slash temp slash Spark event logs. So. Um, 
many a times this file the file where we are config configuring this property spark defaults.conf it, it is already present if it is present well and good if it is not please create one and uh, have this property being added so uh, then uh, this directory where which we are configuring as the log directory has to be uh, uh, has to be the one um, uh, where we where we have to provide permissions for all the users who are starting uh, who will be submitting the spark jobs uh, so that the logs will be written here as well so um, i have created a new directory for this demo uh, slash dem slash eskumari spark event logs and i have given permissions to all the users on this directory once this is done, we are all set. We can start the Spark history server using the command start history server dot sh. And once the service is started, we can access it from the web page using uh, uh, using the URL, uh, the host on which it is started, and one eight zero eight zero is the default port for the Spark history server. So this is a snapshot from the Spark history server web page. So that is, uh, those were the steps required from the cluster side. Now from Informatica side also, we would need to let the uh, DIS know that I have configured the Spark history server and you would need to write the logs at the Spark event logs directory as well. So there are three properties that we need to configure from Informatica side. The first one is Spark event log dot enabled equals to true. Then Spark event log dot directory equals to this has to be the same HDFS directory which I have configured just now in my spark defaults.conf file uh, for this property spark history fs log directory. The third property will be spark yarn history server dot address. Uh, this will be the history server address where it is running. And all these three properties need to be uh, placed in my uh, spark section in the Hadoop connection which I'm using to run my spark job so uh, this is with respect to 10 to 1 so here is a screenshot where I have added all the three properties in my Hadoop connection now let's come to the demo this is one of my data node where I have downloaded the spark 2.1 source code and uh, I have the files here uh, I I then go to the conf directory and uh, I have all the site XMLs here uh, which I have uh, copied from the cluster and uh, I have also configured spark defaults.conf file and this is uh, referring to HDFS directory let me show the HDFS directory as well So here I have all the application logs which I have run after configuring the Spark um, event log directory. So this is about the configuration. Once this is done, I would have to go to SBIN uh, directory and here I can start the Spark history server uh, using the script start history server as such. So I already have it running. So let me show the process. So the first one is the Spark history server which I have started and the port on which it is running. Is 18020. Okay. So uh, this is all about uh, the starting. So once this is started, I can see the uh, web page. Uh, I can see uh, the process in my uh, I can see I can access the web page also so this is my web page and uh, for the history server it is started at it can be accessed from 18080 and here are the application logs so now let me go to the developer client and show you the connection So I have opened the Hadoop connection. I go to the Spark section and yes, I have all the three properties over here. So once this is done, I am all set and I can run my Spark mapping. So this is one of my Spark mapping 
and uh, uh, I have started uh, le let me run this mapping so I have this mapping here which is running I have another mapping uh, I had run this mapping some time back so let me use that link and show you so if I click history from here it will directly take me to the spark history server web page and from here I can uh, uh, go to the to go to further links and check uh, uh, the details about the the spark job so as I had mentioned about the executor logs I can very well fetch it from here by uh, clicking here this is the std uh, error log for my one of my executed log uh, executor so that was about how we can uh, directly access the Spark history server when uh, running a job from Informatica site. So uh, here are some common issues and solution to them. Uh, say we are starting the Spark history server and it fails to come up with the error uh, saying uh, file not found exception on Spark uh, on slash temp Spark event logs. Uh, this means that probably uh, the directory which we have configured for uh, uh, spark history uh, fs log directory is not correct or it is not configured at all so it tries to use is, use some uh, default directory which is not actually present um, second uh, issue could be uh, another issue is uh, we have the spark history server up and running and uh, uh, but we don't see anything in the spark history server web page like as i was able to see the application list uh, over there i do not see that at all though i have those application logs in my hdfs uh, directory which i have configured as uh, spark history fs log directory now this can be uh, if the user who is starting the spark history server does not have permissions to read the files under uh, uh, this directory whichever is configured uh, for spark history fs log directory so these are a few common issues uh, that you can face thank you for hearing me thank you